Hello everyone, I'm Matteo Bravo, a master student from the University of Amsterdam and I'm currently investigating how different environmental variables are affecting coral growth rates in the Caribbean side of Colombia. We are doing this because, together with climate change and ocean warming, ocean acidification is one of the major causes contributing to reef degradation. And in a country with a pretty rough history of reef degradation, this has become of major importance. So, ocean acidification is a product of the increased carbon dioxide uptake from the ocean due to rising atmospheric CO2 concentrations, making the oceans more acidic. And although it's true that some areas are naturally more acidic than others, and that ocean acidification has already occurred in the past, the problem now is the alarming rate at which it's happening, which is faster than the previous 20 million years. The biological impacts of this increased acidification will drastically affect many marine organisms, including corals, reducing their ability to produce their calcium carbonate skeleton, recovering from disturbances, compromising fertilization, and affecting larval settlement. And thanks to the Aquapox logger from Pyroscience, we were able to take a look into the daily fluctuation of pH in three distinct locations in Colombia. Santa Marta, which has pure coastal settings, Isla de Rosario, which is an archipelago not so far from the mainland, and Providencia, an island close to Nicaragua with pure oceanic settings. The logger showed interesting results, with daily fluctuations that were following more or less the same trend in Santa Marta and Providencia. So, in Santa Marta, they fluctuate between 8.03 to 8.23 which represents a fluctuation of nearly 58% in acidity. In Providencia, we see for example that on the second day, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the pH increased, reducing the acidity by 100%. These trends in Santa Marta and Providencia could be possibly explained by the presence of underwater currents, for example the Caribbean current, which can bring new water influxes in the same time frame, day after day. In Isla de Rosario, however, because of the little time I was able to perform my analysis, we don't have enough data to explain this particular trend with a little but stable increase over two days, followed by a decrease. But a remark should be made for this last location because of the River Magdalena, which, especially during the rainy season from April to November, discharges heavy loads of sediment which are then transported southward to the archipelago very likely to affect its water with high sedimentation and nutrients. However, we are just scratching the surface with this new insight, and further studies are required to fully understand these daily patterns. So lastly, I wanted to thank again Pyroscience for their sponsorship, helping us better develop our research, and everyone for listening.